highlights. Legacy government set to boost creative economy, cultural heritage. Health experts move to tackle malnutrition amid food crisis. On the 14th, former Speaker Nancy Pelosi urges President Biden to decide on plans ahead 2024 U.S. election. And in sports, tennis world number one Yannick Sinner accepts defeat in 2024 Wimbledon quarterfinal. And now the details, I am Akan Usen. In a bid to showcase the rich cultural heritage of Lagos to the global community and boost creative economy, the state government is set to, boost, to host this year's edition of Afropolis. Commissioner for Tourism, Arts and Culture, Toke Benson Awinka, who made this known at a town hall meeting at Unicon, said Afropolis is a celebration of rich and cultural of rich cultural heritage, creativity and innovation, where African creatives come together to showcase their talents, exchange ideas and collaborate on groundbreaking projects. Benson Awing expressed optimism that the cultural festival, which will take place at the end of October, will foster community spirit and enhance Lagos' global reputation as the largest black cultural melting pot in the world. She noted that the festival is a testament to the vibrant and dynamic spirit of Lagos, with a promise that the Babajide Sonwulu administration will continue to support young creative minds with global visibility and opportunities they deserve. The play masterfully weaves together elements of history, culture and entertainment, making it a must-see for everyone. As a commissioner for tourism, I recognize the significance of arts and culture in promoting tourism and showcasing our state's diversity. The play is an excellent representation of our cultural world, which I encourage everyone to experience. The world is changing rapidly, and cultures and traditions are fast losing steam to world order. We have made significant investments in infrastructure, such as renovating key cultural sites and establishing new venues for arts and performances. Those efforts ensure that our artists have the platform they need to thrive. The essence of, of Afropolis lies in its ability to bring together a diverse area of creative minds. Imagine the vibrant fusion of traditional and modern expressions that will be on display from indigenous crafts to cutting-edge digital art. This On sports, the founder and artistic director of Afropolis, Kudus Onikeku, stated that Lagos has not optimized its tourism potential to the world, hence the need to collaborate with relevant stakeholders to showcase Lagos to the world. Onikeku thanked Governor Sonwulu for supporting the initiative, which he believed would further drive and increase the tourism economy of the state as many international tourists will be in Lagos for the cultural festival and explore the different geographical areas in the state. When we started Afropolis, we were very, very deliberate about the use of technology to deliver what we want to deliver. We imagine Afropolis like a hybrid event, meaning it's happening both virtually and physically at the same time. So even if you do not come to Lagos physically, there are ways that you can also participate in what's happening. So the app is, apart from being a Cultural Festival will showcase various creative sectors such as music, fashion, gaming, tech, design, film, dance, AI, and research. The Lagos State Past Tables Monitoring Office PMO has commended Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM for effective, timely traffic information and efficient service delivery to residents of the state. Permanent Secretary, Lagos State Past Titles Monitoring Office, Adetutu Oshosonia, stated this during a working visit to the management of Lagos Traffic Radio for an assessment, familiarization tour, and support on the operational activities of the station. 
Oshasoya said PMO will ensure that all projects being embarked on by power settles, agencies of the state government are monitored effectively to achieve a world-class city of Lagos and complements the efforts of Governor Babajide Songulu's Themes Plus agenda. She said the Power Statals Monitoring Office has the mandate to coordinate the activities of all Power Statals slash agencies of the state government, which includes and not limited to revenue generation, monitoring and reporting to the governor on the performances of the various agencies. While appreciating the management and staff of Lagos Traffic Radio for efficient service delivery as one of its kind in Africa, Oshasoya urged the station not to relent, rest on its oars in ensuring that adequate information on traffic-related issues are reported promptly. I'm happy with that traffic radio is doing so well. It's doing very well. It's commendable. It's uh, even working and you know, showing initiatives to do more. And we're happy with the initiatives that are around and um, we also want to see where we can add value where we can support and enhance the internally rated revenue of the establishment so that it can be more viable and provide um, better app services for the citizens of Lagos State. Earlier in his welcome address, General Manager of Lagos Traffic Radio, Tayo Akonli, said the station since inception has increased its leadership to 2 million daily and has come out stronger in the area of new media geared towards providing timely information to road users. Akonli said the agency, as part of its strategic moves to reach more listeners, is set to launch two booster stations in Ikordu and Leki Aja Axis of the state after a careful feasibility study. He appreciated the permanent secretary and her team for their continued support and ideas towards the growth of the station, especially in the area of revenue generation also the station carried out so much reforms and those re re reforms were intentionally put in place because there's the need for the station to uh, improve its services to the questions thereby adding value to their daily movements the team from the Lagos State Power Statals Monitoring Office was also taken around some operational areas of the station by the general manager. <music> Speaker of the Lagos State House of Assembly, Mudashiro Obasa, says the electricity bill before the House is a confirmation of the state government's zeal to ensure regular and uninterrupted power supply to residents. This is coming as the House held a stakeholders meeting on the bill, which, if passed into law, will allow the state government to license, generate, transmit and distribute electricity to unserved and underserved areas of the state. The proposed law, according to the Speaker, who was represented by Deputy Speaker Mujisola Lazbat Miranda, speaks to seeks to take care of everything in the electricity sector majorly by contributing to the sustainable development of the state. The Speaker notes that the bill establishes a mechanism for electricity planning that promotes off-grid solutions for households and micro, small and medium-scale enterprises. Also speaking, Chairman, House Committee on Energy, Sabora Ulua, said the bill establishes a commercial and a technical regulatory framework for the Lagos electricity market to ensure reliable and universal access to electricity for all residents of the state. Now to the rest of the stories, health experts have converged on Lagos to chart possible ways of tackling malnutrition and reducing its increasing indices amid food crisis and nutrition in Nigeria. Speaking at the ongoing Lagos State training of trainers on maternal, infant and young child nutrition, our MIYCN training course organized by the Federal Ministry of Health and Social Welfare, the lead facilitator Maria Udi expressed worry over increasing bad nutrition indices. What they said the participants were carefully selected to improve the healthcare system. So it appears that Lagos State is already contributing its quota to cater for the bad indices we have nationally. We've been looking at the JHIS 
2018 was really horrible uh, with the issue of food crisis and nutrition, the issue is getting worse by the day. So this training is timely for everyone, including the states, being in the commercial hub of the country with a very large population and um, um, fertility rates and other contending issues. In his welcome address, Permanent Secretary, Lagos State Ministry of Health, Olusha Gu Ubui, said the state government has taken nutrition as a major part of its public health response by creating a Directorate of Family Health and Nutrition. However, the good news is that the state has currently uh, taken another down stride in trying to address the issue of nutrition by providing the counterpart funding to match. Uh, the funding provided by UNICEF, $100,000 has been approved by the Lagos State Government. This will be matched by UNICEF to provide $200,000 uh, for nutrition. This is in addition to our actual budget uh, for nutrition programs uh, in the ministry. The Director of Family and Health Nutrition, Lagos State Ministry of Health, for Lashadi Uludara noted that the training is an indicator that there will soon be an improvement in the Lagos State's nutrition indices. In her goodwill message, the state coordinator Alive and Thrive Lagos, Olaumi Ajayi, who pledged more support, commended the federal and Lagos State government for their significant strides in combating malnutrition and promoting health and well-being for mothers and children in Nigeria and beyond. President Bola Tinubu will meet with the organized labor in Abuja tomorrow to further discuss the new minimum wage for workers in Nigeria. The president is expected to make a decision on the 62,000 Naira proposal of the government and private sector, as well as the 250,000 Naira demand of the organized labor. The Thursday is coming about a month after the president said in his Democracy Day speech on June 12, 2024, that an executive bill on the new national minimum wage for workers will soon be sent to the National Assembly for passage. And now to foreign news. Former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says the United States President Joe Biden must decide quickly whether to stay in the 2024 White House race. The longtime Biden ally said this while declining to say def definitely, definitively that she wanted him to run. In an opinion piece published on Wednesday in the New York Times, a Democrat and Hollywood star George Clooney, who co-hosted a fundraiser for Biden last month, withdrew his support. In our sports tennis world number one, Yannick Sinner has blamed his defeat to Daniel Medvedev in the quarterfinal of the ongoing Wimbledon 2024 on health. Sinner was attended to by medics after his doctor signaled he struggled physically during the keenly contested four-hour game on Tuesday, July 9. The game ended 6-7, 6-4, 7-6, 2-6, 6-3 in favor of Medvedev. In a post-match press conference, the Italian admitted that he struggled physically on the court, but remained resolute until the third game where he felt unbalanced. Sina acknowledged that Medvedev outplayed him and deserved the victory. And just before we go, carry out proper and adequate checks on your vehicles before setting out. You can follow us and like all our various social media platforms on X at Traffic Radio 961, Facebook Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM, Instagram Lagos Traffic Radio 961, on YouTube, subscribe and watch us live on our channel, Traffic Radio 961. You can also visit our website on www.trafficradio961.ng. Did you know that the Song Wulu administration provided 61,000 units of single jewel composite furniture for secondary schools. You can get more details on the Lagos State Government's website. To end the news, here are the highlights of the major stories. In a bid to showcase the rich cultural heritage of Lagos to the global community and boost creative economy, the State Government is set to host this year's edition of Afropolis. Health experts have converged on Lagos for a training of trainers on maternal, infant and young child nutrition, MIYCN course, to chart possible ways of tackling malnutrition and reducing its increasing indices among amid food crisis and, and nutrition in Nigeria.
Ross told you that former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says the United States President Joe Biden must decide quickly whether to stay in the 2024 White House race. And in sports tennis world number one, Yannick Sinner has blamed his defeat to Daniel Medvedev in the quarterfinal of the ongoing Wimbledon 2024 on ill health. For a contact with the newsroom, please send a message to info at trafficradio961.ng. And that ends the news broadcast compiled by Adirayo Iduolaya. I am Akan Usen. Thanks for listening and please... Stay safe. Good evening.